Having a slice of ocean in my living room has always been my dream. It's beautiful, relaxing, and more fun to stare at than Netflix. Guessing by the fact you're here, it's probably your dream too. I have some good news for you, it's totally doable. This guide is based on Red Sea's 30 years of experience in creating artificial coral reefs. So if you follow these steps, you will be able to create a successful reef aquarium. We will guide you step by step, give you the essential info, and most importantly, steer you away from common mistakes that cost time and money. But before we begin with the practical side, it's important to understand the logic behind running a saltwater aquarium, so you can make more informed decisions as you go along. As you can see, this aquarium is home to about 30 corals, fish, and invertebrates. In their natural habitat, the lighting is just right. The waste is carried away by the currents, and they rely on several chemical elements found in the water around them. Elements which never run out since there's plenty of water in the ocean. When these marine animals are placed in an aquarium, they lose access to the vast resources and stable conditions of the ocean. Our challenge then is to turn this aquarium into an artificial ecosystem that continuously supplies them with everything they need to thrive. And we do that by doing the following. One, providing artificial salt water. Two, making sure it's always at the right temperature. Three, setting up the right lighting with accurate light and dark periods. Four, creating a continuous water flow in the tank. Five, filtering the waste and six, replenishing and stabilizing the chemical elements in the water. Now, the easiest way to check this list is to start out with a Max Nano Peninsula, like the one we have here, which is a plug and play system that already comes with the necessary lighting, filtration and circulation. But whichever system you choose, you can totally accomplish this. Let's go through this list so you can understand what's what. One, providing salt water. Artificial salt water can be bought at a pet store, or it can be prepared by mixing water and salt. The water we use comes from an RO system, which takes tap water and turns it into nearly pure water. We then mix it with a commercially available reef salt that's enhanced with essential chemical elements found in seawater. 2. Temperature control the temperature in a natural coral reef barely changes, so we make sure the temperature in the tank is a stable 25 to 26 degrees Celsius or 77 to 79 Fahrenheit. 3. Lighting Corals rely on photosynthesis, and 85% of their energy is derived from specific intensities of blue and violet light energy. A suitable reef light needs to be configured to the blue and violet spectrum as well as be powerful enough to spread sufficient light all around the tank. 4. Water flow and circulation. Corals are static creatures, which is why we have to constantly move the water surrounding them to spread nutrients to all corners of the tank, while pushing the waste towards the filters. 5. Filtration. There are three types of filtrations in a reef tank. Mechanical filtration, for example, sponge filters, which works by physically removing waste particles from the water. Biological filters, for example, live rock, which are areas that serve as growing beds for useful bacteria that transform fish secretions into less harmful elements. And chemical filters, such as activated carbon, that adsorb and remove harmful compounds that pass through them. 6. Replenishing elements. Since corals consume elements from the water, we need to replenish these elements using specific supplements, and then we need to monitor their levels to ensure they remain stable. We learn which supplement we need to dose with and how much by testing our tank water and using test kits for each element. And there you have it, the basic guideline to creating a reef system. Now let's talk about tank size. You should of course choose the size of your first system based on your taste and budget, but it's worth noting that maintaining a smaller tank is generally less demanding in terms of budget, physical effort, and time input. But whichever size you choose, it is absolutely vital that your desired system can be placed in a space that complies with the following. 1. The system will not be exposed to direct sunlight. 
Two, there must be an electrical socket nearby, preferably one designated for the aquarium. Three, the floor must be able to support the system's weight. And four, the floor can be leveled on. By the way, if you're planning on placing your aquarium on a piece of furniture, it too must be able to support the weight and be leveled. Also, the system should preferably be in proximity to a water faucet and drainage. And lastly, the equipment can be a bit noisy, so it's probably best not to place it in the bedroom. Next episode, we'll review the essential equipment you need to make this happen, so check it out.